Praise the Lord, Saints. I'm Dr. Julie Blair, and today is a very special day. Happy Father's Day to all of you fathers. Today we're going to get into God's Word, and we're going to investigate everything that there is. Well, probably not everything, but we're going to investigate a whole lot that we need to recognize and understand about fathers from the manner in which they were created. And so we're going to first begin by getting into 2 Corinthians and I think I'm in it with a uh, NIV today. So when we get into God's Word, there's a reason why we start with God's Word, because that's the standard. And so we're just going to follow His set standard. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, it tells us that, and God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. When we examine a father, we see that God is our father. He is the giver of life. Without him, there is no life, and apart from Jesus, you can do no good thing. And so when we begin to recognize the beginning of all things, God, our father, you see, we have to go to God's Word in order to have the proper context of what it is that we are even examining. And we have to recognize that there is a war out there. There is a war raging. And it isn't just the feminist agenda. It isn't just a racial agenda. There is a war to destroy families. And we must be on guard to recognize that so long as the enemy keeps people entrapped and keeps them in bondage, blaming men, and men blaming women, and households being destroyed, the enemy wins. You must, saints, recognize that the battle is not the woman to your left or right, or the man to your left or right, but it is the enemy trying to destroy not only your family unit, but the future generations. Fatherlessness is one of the biggest single issues that we have facing our country, and as we examine and we begin to see that so much as we take God out of the picture, we are also removing fathers. It is, it waits an astounding and we must be on guard and we must recognize it and we must have a heart for prayer and a heart for God to turn around what is really a sinking ship and a tragedy in this nation. You see, God is our creator. He is our father. He is our all-sufficient provider. I just read to you 2 Corinthians 9, 8. God is able to bless you abundantly. He's able. He's able to do that. So that in all things in all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. You know why? Because that's what a father does. You see, when we examine the role of a father, there is so much involved in it. And when we start diminishing, denigrating, and removing men from being fathers, we all lose out as a society. Boys lose out. Girls lose out. We all lose out. We see that a father is a very present help in time of need. Children need their fathers. Oh, we're going to get to some statistics here in a few minutes, but let it be known that children need their fathers. Children need their mothers. One is not any more important than the other. When we turn to the book of Psalms, chapter 46, it reads this, God is our refuge and strength and our ever-present help in trouble. That would make sense because isn't that what a father is? Think about the days when you were growing up, if you had a father, you could go to your father for any type of, of help your father was there. You see, when we remove that from the family, where do children go? A mother is not a father, just as much so as a father is not a mother. Our society has rules so contradictory to God's biblical layout and plan that no wonder why children are so confused. God is a God of order, and God created man to be fathers and women to be mothers. There is a reason, and when we start removing the order that God created, we live in chaos, and chaos begets chaos. And we see that in our own cities, our own towns, and in this great nation. It is very sad that we can see here God is our refuge, but yet when we remove him, we lose our father. Isn't it time we get back to the roots, God our father? 
and stop exchanging him for for our own ideals and ideologies that are that are sorely lacking because we lack wisdom enough to even recognize that God is our father and that we need him. Psalms 46 1 tells us that the Lord that, that God is our refuge and ever present help in trouble. Isn't a father, or I'm actually not even going to ask her, I'm just going to tell you that a father is one who keeps you from falling. How many times when you were growing up did you need your father? You probably did, and some of you maybe just like me that said, well, I never knew my father. You know what? I didn't either. But you see, here's the thing is that God is my father. Abba, father, daddy. We have got to recognize the importance and recognize that he would be there to help keep you from falling. He is that he is mighty. We see that he is that who ought to be feared. You know, when I look at, at growing up, I grew up in, an, in, in a foster home and I also lived in, in an adoptive home. And there was something about the fear of dad. You know, some of you may be able to relate to that. That And this was really before women took over the household. You know, back in the day, well, wait till your father comes home and you just you just knew he wasn't even home, but you just knew that, that it, things were going to be a little bit different when, when he came home. You know, we also know that our father is from above. You see, there's a responsibility that comes with that. When we look at God, our father, he is from above. But when we also see that God ordained men to be fathers, those that are fathers, that there's a big responsibility that comes with that. And we must recognize the responsibility of fathers and give them their due credit for who they are in that particular role, while also praying for fathers as well who have not yet stepped up to be fulfilling of that role. You see, a father is also worthy to be praised. How often are you giving God, your father, the praise for who he is? You know, there's so much in society that elevates women. And, and we can understand why women are beautiful. Women can be gracious and kind and also loving and giving and beautiful and, and, and all of the things that come from being women. But you know what? There's also a thing that, that is worthy to be praised of men as well. And, and, I'm, and I'm not saying that we're putting men in the place of God by any means. But we have to be examining the role of men and, and fathers as well to recognize that they still have value. And on this day, recognize those around you who, who are fathers because our society really isn't giving them all the credence that they deserve. And in fact, we can turn on the telly and see many, many commercials that make men to look stupid. We can see, we can see fast food commercials with, with grown men in strollers acting like babies and that they can't figure out how to do taxes, yet it seems that men are leaders of many nations around the world. It is inappropriate for us to denigrate men just as much so as it is women, and we must recognize that that's what's within our hearts. And this is why King David would say, clean up your heart in me, O Lord. This is where we must begin, and as our eyes and ears and hearts and spirits and souls open up to the Lord, and we begin to focus on him and ask him, Lord, teach me how to love. Show me the value of a father. You begin to recognize him in a whole new way. You see, fathers are worthy to be praised for who they are and what they contribute to society. We have got to realize their importance and stop refusing to recognize the good that they bring to the table. If I were to ask you what is the correlation of how you see your father to that of God the Father, what would you say? You know, I remember years ago, I was... I was asked if I saw my father the way that I saw, or if I saw God the way that I saw my father. And I had to go before the Lord and repent because I'll tell you something. I saw God as I did my earthly dad who was non-existent, who really, I believed, abandoned me, who wasn't there, who did me wrong, who was non-existent. He served no purpose in my life. It was as though he conceived me out of lust and then that was it and I felt that I was just left and that he cared nothing for me and that I was just this this little girl who had no blueprint because really when we examine God's word and when we examine fathers they set the blueprint God gave fathers the blueprint God created fathers and God is the father he is the blueprint of, of what it's supposed to look like the architecture and or the architect and when when that is removed 
we're left with nothing. And that's what I felt. And when I started taking that to the Lord, my heart started changing. And so I had a heart for fathers that I had never had before, and I saw God in a different way. You see, I re resented God for so long because of how I didn't have a father. And it impacted my relationship with him. And so I want to share with you some statistics that I think you will probably find mind-blowing as I did because they really reveal where our society is and the work that we really need to do to have the proper respect for both men and for women as well. But on this day, I want to just share these statistics with you about fathers. 63 million are estimated to be fathers in the U.S. 63% of youth suicides are from fatherless homes. Five times the national average, U.S. Department of Health Census. 90% of homeless and runaway children are from fatherless homes. 32 times the average. 85% of our children who show behavior disorders come from fatherless homes. You see, even though I was adopted and lived in a home with a man, he really, he, he was more like an Ahab and she was Jezebel. And, and in that, everything she said was the order. He, he just didn't really, he was not the man of the household. He, he wore the skirt, if you will. And, and I look at the fact that my biological father was non-existent and the behavior disorders that came with that were very prevalent. And that's from the Center for Disease Control. So we can recognize that if 85% of our children show, show behavioral disorders, they don't need medication, they need a father. And so fathers, I'm going to encourage you to stand up, step it up, because your children need you. And wives, your children need their father. Ex-wives, your children need their father. Ex-girlfriends or girlfriends or mistresses or whatever, whom baby daddy, whatever it is, your children need a father more than they need that medication. They need the father of all as well. Let's just be clear on this day. 80% of rapists with anger problems come from fatherless homes. That's 14% the national average. That's according to Justice and Behavior, Volume 14. 71% of high school dropouts come from fatherless homes. Nine times the average. I pretty much was a high school dropout. I had so many behavioral problems in high school, I was suspended three times. Oh yeah, that was me. I learned how to fight at a very young age, and, and it served me well when being bullied, and I had many, many problems, and it was by God's grace that I even graduated high school after being bullied by a teacher, which that's a whole other story, but I had so many behavioral problems that were because of the lack of that parental role in my life. It wasn't until many years later when I was able to see it and recognize it, and this is why I stand today encouraging you to recognize the value of a father and to pray for fathers today because they so desperately need your prayers in the name of Jesus. 70% of youths in state-operated institutions come from fatherless homes. 85% of all youth in prison come from fatherless homes. That's 20% or 20 times the national average. That's from the Texas Department of Corrections. A study of 13,986 women in prison found that more than half of them grew up without a father. 24 million children, 34% live absent of their biological fathers. Compared to children born within a marriage, children born to cohabitating parents are three times as likely to experience father's absence, and children born to unmarried, uncohabitating parents are four times as likely to live in father-absent homes. So this is definitely a case for biblical marriage. A father and a mother are needed regardless of what warped society wants to tell you that, that men are just to be discarded, that women can bring home the bacon and fry it up in the pan, all while making less, by the way, but let's not get into that. But we begin to recognize that men and women are needed, and not just because the law needs mowing. Let's be clear about that as well. We recognize and we must recognize the importance and we must all stand to help fathers become the fathers that their children need. Your children need their father. I'm a testimony of what it's like to not have a proper father because I never got the opportunity to meet my biological father. He passed away before we were ever reunited. I learned that he was career Air Force, to God be the glory, and he also worked for the Secret Service. I didn't meet him 
I grew up without, as many people have had that less fortunate experience of knowing their fathers. So we can see that without fathers in society, we are all being cheated, and cheated in big ways. When we look at the murder rate just within Chicago alone, there have been more than a thousand murders to date, and we are only in June for the year 2017. How many of those children do you think don't have father representation in their homes? More than 70%. It's a tragedy that our youth are killing one another if only they had a father to stand in, which they do, but we have to start bringing the word of God back into our homes, into our schools, and not waiting until children get to prison to get the word and to recognize who their father is. You see what happens when children are deprived of their fathers? Eight times are more likely to go to prison. Five times are more likely to commit suicide. Twenty times have the behavioral problems. Twenty times are more likely to become rapists. Ten times are more likely to become substance abusers. Nine times are more likely to drop out of high school. And 73 times more likely to be fatally abused, according to Dr. Daniel Amnius. So, what can you do to prevent that? How do you see your father today? What level of forgiveness is in your heart that you need to just come to terms with? What level of bitterness do you need to remove? What level of resentment must you deal with so that you can start elevating and celebrating fathers for who they are and the role that they play in society? You see, if you're a wife or a mother, give glory to that man that is the father of your children. Does he have it easy? No. Especially now. White men are known to be committing suicide at higher rates than any other demographic in society. Many of you, hopefully not, I would, I would pray, laugh at that statistic. We know that there are mass murders being committed because of political beliefs, and we have got to stop the nonsense. Life has value. Blue lives, red lives, white lives, black lives, your life matters. Fathers matter. Children matter. Mothers matter. Grandparents matter. Uncles, aunts, nieces, your pets matter. We've got to stop rebuking one another in the name of hatred or accepting or saying we're tolerant, but yet belittling one another. We can see that in the book of 1 Peter 3.3, 3, it says, Why respect and obey your husbands in the same way. This is not that husbands are, are your slave master. Let's not, let's not get into that religion on this day. No, no. But you see, it says, Then the husbands who do not obey the word of God will want to know God. You see, it's through a kind and gentle spirit that a husband may come to know the Lord. Not your belittling and not, not the food that you think is going to fill his stomach. That's, that's all old wives' tales. It says they will want to know God because their wives live good lives, even though they say nothing about God. The way that you love your husband will be demonstrated to your children. What example can you be to lift up that father to your children? It can be very challenging when men don't live up to the standards that are unrealistic that women have. And it's a sad shame to go be in a grocery store and hear women belittling their husbands instead of thanking God that they even have them. Because there are many women who have lost husbands who are believing God for them. And all the while, there are men doing their best who get nothing but belittled for what they aren't. Well, then you shouldn't have married that man if he wasn't. But you did. So praise God that you did and pray him into being who God would have him be, which would be a great father to the children that you gave birth to. And wives, it says, to love your wives. Or husbands, love your wives, rather. See, fathers are called many things, but here's a few that God's word tells us. Fathers are called to teach. In Ephesians 6, 4, Ephesians 6, 4 gives us much. And it tells us, fathers, do not, do not exasperate your children. Oh, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. So that is a command. Do not exasperate your children. So that means don't be a deadbeat. Don't treat your wife with disrespect. Don't belittle her. Don't have unrealistic expectations of her because of what you think she should be, that is according to whatever standard you saw in a magazine. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. So if you're not getting your instruction from the Lord, I encourage you to do so now, because your children will be the ones to benefit. Not only that, Deuteronomy 30.19 tells us, choose life so that you and your children may live. Colossians 3.21 Fathers, do not embitter your children or they will become discouraged. 
We can see from all the, all the statistics that I just shared that many children are suffering the consequences of the lack of fatherhood. Fathers, if you're not in your, child, in your children's lives today, do whatever you can to get there because they need you. They are crying out. The behavioral problems that children have today is a symptom. We tend to focus on the behavior and the behavior and the behavior, but the behavior is a symptom of the problem. The behavior is a cry out for what the children are not getting, and they are not getting what they should be getting, which would be the love of the Father. So it is your responsibility as a father to lead them in all the ways of Christ. And if you need help with that, then get the help and the resources. And what I can tell you is get one of these. This will change your life more than any single thing. You know, the role of a father also is to love and to bless. We turn back to the Gospels in the book of Luke 11, 11 reads this. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? We see God as our Father, and he just loves to bless his children. You being a father, I'm sure, would love to bless your children, and that is part of your role. Do whatever you must to be in the presence of your children. Give them your presence because your presence will outweigh your presence any time. Your children probably will not forget the bike or probably will forget the bike before they will forget the experience of you, the father who taught them to ride it. We tend to miss out on so much of our children's lives because we get so focused on many other things and we've got to stop majoring on the minors and start minoring or stop majoring on the majors and stop minoring on the minors. And recognize that your role is to love and to bless your children, just as much so as God the Father has done for you. The other thing that a father, a role of a father is, is to discipline. It is not the role of the mother to be the disciplinarian. No, no. My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you, because the Lord disciplines those he loves and punishes everyone he accepts as a son. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as sons, for what son is not disciplined by his father? You see, discipline is your job, is your responsibility. When a father is absent, it puts that whole role on a mother, and it changes the dynamic of the role between a mother and a child. The father is needed in the home for that level of discipline. It is time that we get fathers back in their rightful place and we stop allowing the court systems and all this all this, this nonsense to be infiltrating our families. It is time that we stand together one to another and start praying for fathers and we start praying for mothers and we start praying for unity within the home and the biblical order that God created it to be. You see, Proverbs 3, 11 to 12 tells us, My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke. Because the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father, the son he delights in. You see, if we as a society remove fathers to stand up and do his job, we all lose out. If we, we, if we just disregard the role of fathers, we lose out as a society. And if we rebuke and remove the rights of fathers, we all lose out. And it isn't just the father that loses out. It is that father's children and that children's children and that children's child children as well. Because that child losing out loses out on not only the father's love, but also the discipline that he needs that would be that correction out of the love that comes from a father. That child would also be losing out on the blueprint of what it means to have a father in the home. And that is such a big, big issue in our society. The level of rebellion would go down if we were able to keep fathers in their present role of fathers into and to operate a level that is withstanding and upholding of who they are as fathers to provide the instruction and correction for their children. We probably wouldn't have the behavioral problems that we do with our schools. We probably would have less of an abortion rate by our young girls because they would recognize the love of a father and they wouldn't go see need to go sit in the back seat of a car for some guy to pretend that he loves her all the while using her, getting her pregnant, and leaving her. We would see that she would have, have a level of, of love within her and a level of love that would keep her protected and safe from those that would wish to harm her by, by ways of societal nastiness, one might say. You see, she would understand who she is because of the love of the Father. She wouldn't have to go seek love in all the wrong places as many young girls do today because fathers have been removed from the homes. 
those fathers that are listening to this that are choosing to not be in your homes do what you must and pray for your children's mothers that they would receive you that their hearts would soften towards you so that way you can fulfill your rightly duty and obligation as a father you see it's time that we walk in a level of forgiveness of one to another that we walk in a level of understanding that we must walk in forgiveness many may say well you just don't know my what my what my baby's daddy's done it doesn't matter what he's done what matters is what you're doing right at this very moment you must walk in a level of love and forgiveness because that man is not perfect but you know what neither were you and you chose that man to be your baby daddy just saying so we each have to take responsibility and accountability for our own actions and say you know what today's the day that I can remove the bitterness today is the day I can walk in love and forgiveness today is the day that I can recognize that that man that is my children's father is not perfect but neither am I if you grew up in a home without a father you know what it's time that that you forgive him as well you see nobody will ever be really able to live up to the expectations that we have because by the time that they do we might recognize that they did and so we'll want to change those level of expectations so then it always keeps us in a proper position which is really unrealistic and not even a proper position so if you've had unrealistics of that father forgive him he's just a man he's not God you see if you're a child of a parent understand these biblical words written in Exodus in chapter 20 verse 12 honor your mother and father so that you may live the live in the land live long in the land the Lord your God has given you see so notice here it says honor your mother and father or honor your father and your mother did you know that the word family stands for father and mother I love you Proverbs 23 22 listen to your father who gave you life and do not despair your mother when she's old you see your mother was the vessel used to deliver you but your father gave you life as God gave him life to give you life the Lord or God rather wanted a family he sowed his son as a seed when you want a family men sow their, son, their seed to build a family American society really is is downgrading the importance of this and we have to get back to the biblical foundations of family we get into Proverbs 13 1 a wise son heeds his father's instructions but a mocker does not listen to rebuke we have a lot of fools young fools living in society and it's very clear that they're not heeding their father's instructions doesn't matter what old what age you are it is time now for you to heed your father's instructions and you may say well I don't have a father I will tell you yes you do it is time to get into God's Word and learn how to behave if you've never been taught I did not know how to behave I had not been taught I grew up in a very dysfunctional excuse me a very dysfunctional home very dysfunctional home and the Lord taught me much so none of us really have an excuse if we claim to be Christians and then yet not follow God's Word with obeying and honoring our mother and father and you know it doesn't doesn't matter if their last name Bill Gates or Buffett or anything else you may say well to God be the glory they're not but here's the thing the Bible is very clear honor your mother and father or honor your father and mother Proverbs 15 5 a fool spurns his father's discipline but whoever heeds correction shows prudence you see I had to forgive my fa my biological father for all the things that he wasn't like there <laughs> I had to forgive him I was cheated out of all those things I was cheated out of father-daughter dances I was cheated out of all of the things that come from a father and it wasn't until many many years later that I started seeing just how much I really missed out on because of the lack of my father and it wasn't until after I forgave him for what he wasn't that I was able to see and able for my life to be changed so you see if you happen to be fatherless right now don't despair don't despair don't despair at all forgive your father for not being in your life forgive him because you know what he probably has enough guilt and he probably wants nothing more than to be in your life 
and you know when i had to forgive my biological mother for what she wasn't it was the gateway for her to receive forgiveness and to be able to walk in a new level of forgiveness to forgive herself and come to christ sometimes it is not fair as children when we have to be the adults but you know what it doesn't really much matter when you honor your father and mo mother the lord will recognize that you see there are many things that come from fathers and if you've harbored a level of unforgiveness or resentment toward your father, just ask the Lord to work through you. Ask him to, to help you through that because your life will change and you will begin to see that your father is just a man who made a lot of mistakes. He's no different than anyone else. He just isn't. And sometimes we have expectations on, on husbands and on fathers to be perfect and when they're not, we believe that they let us down, which is why we need to go to God, our Father, who never will. And Jesus Christ, the one who loves us, who died for us, who was always there. You see, the word tells us in 2 Corinthians 6, 18. Let's turn to it right here. 2 Corinthians 6, 18. I will be a father to you, and you will be sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Psalm 27, 10. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. And Psalm 68, 5, a father to the fatherless, a defender of the widows, is God in his holy dwelling. You see, we have to recognize that God is the one who set the blueprint for families. He's the one that set the blueprint for fathers. And when we remove fathers from the homes, we are removing the blueprint that the Lord set in motion. This is not to say and to get into a rebuke of an argument. Well, you just don't know what he did. I don't care because I also can say, do you know what you've done? So it's not really relevant. And all that does is, is creates a level of deflection and a removal of accountability and responsibility for what you could be doing today, which would be praying. You know, in Proverbs 21, 1, it tells us that the, that the Lord moved the heart of a king. Don't you think that if he can move the heart of a king that he could also move the heart of that man who happens to be the husband or the father of your children. So we have to start operating in a new level of authority and stop blaming and start saying, what can I do today to get my, my baby's children, the father that they are worthy of? What can I do today? You can start praying in the name of Jesus for that change. What is the change that you would be believing God for and start operating in that level of change? You see in Deuteronomy 10.16, it tells us, Circumcise your hearts, therefore, and do not be stiff-necked any longer. For the Lord your God is a God of gods, the Lord of lords, the great Almighty, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality and accepts no biases. He defends the cause of the fatherless and the widows, loving the alien, giving him food and clothing. We recognize that the call on fathers is great. The call on men is great. The call on women is great. But on this day, we're going to be lifting up fathers so that they can take their place. Because, you know, when we look at the statistics of fathers being removed out of the home and the rate of suicide among, among Caucasian men, those are future generations growing up without fathers. And that is a great travesty in this country. Our children need fathers and they need our help being the fathers that, that they are needed to be. We don't need to be making more commercials and mockeries of men. We don't need to be denigrating fathers in their roles or making them feel stupid or telling them that they're stupid or emasculating them and telling them that their masculinity is toxic or that they need to be wearing manx and spanx and makeup and all these things. We need to stop the nonsense and get back to God's biblical understanding and God's word about fathers. We, we must do this if we as a society want to stand. We've got to start standing in unity one to another in agreement for the importance of fathers, bringing them into the home so that they can do what it is that God created them to do. And then we must stand alongside them to pray and to be their battle buddy so that they can fulfill what God created them to in the role of being a father. So I pray that you stand with me in, in praying in the name of Jesus for our fathers today. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for fathers today. I thank you that you've, you've, you've just created so many fathers. And I first and foremost thank you, Lord, that you are our father, our Abba Father. Lord, we come before you one to another 
to lift up fathers, for those that are fathers to get up, to stand up, to accept the responsibility of fathers, that the level of complacency remo would be removed, that they would understand that time is precious, that they need to be the, the standard, and that they need to lay out the blueprint for their households of what a father is. Or I just lift up the mothers as well to stand and pray in agreement with me so that they can help the fathers become who they know that they can be in Christ. And Lord, we just remove, we remove and rebuke in the name of Jesus every retaliatory spirit coming against fathers, every every assignment from the enemy to rebuke, denigrate, dismiss, disregard men as fathers. Lord, we remove that right now in the name of Jesus. We just loose your ministering spirits over fathers today for strength, Lord, for you did not give them a spirit of timidity but that, or fear, but that of power and strength in you. So, Lord, we just lift up fathers today. We ask boldly that they would stand up in the level of boldness, Lord. We pray that there would be forgiveness toward fathers for those who have not been who they should be as fathers, Lord, who have not accepted their role and who has not properly fulfilled it. But, Lord, we just ask for wisdom, wisdom in how they fathers would would operate in their in their title as father and so lord we pray for wisdom and how we go forth in lifting them up so that they can fulfill that that requirement and that obligation lord we just lift up the children lord and just speak that there would be restoration in homes fathers to their sons fathers to their daughters that there would be forgiveness of fathers to themselves lord mothers to fathers fathers to 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 mothers children to fathers fathers to children lord that there that there would be hearts restored to you lord for the biblical understanding biblical wisdom and a biblical standard of level of family that you ordained lord we thank you for fathers today Lord, we just we just thank you, Lord, for what you can do in them, to them, and through them. And Lord, we thank you for future children that are that are set to become at your ordained time. And pray, Lord, that they would have a proper understanding of the biblical blueprint of fathers. And Lord, we just thank you that you are our Father, Lord, and that we can stand one to another in you, Lord. And I just speak blessings over every single father, Lord, that they, in their own way and time, would rebuke every single lie, every single preconceived notion, and reject. Every every single vow that they've accepted over themselves that has been a lie. Lord, we just we just don't receive that in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just speak forth that they would accept their role, that they would take it serious, that they would receive it, and that you would bless them accordingly. And Lord, I thank you for restorations of hearts and hope filled in your name, Jesus, for families, Lord. And I just give you the praise and the glory, Lord, for what you're going to do in their lives, to their lives, and through their lives. And I pray all this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Thank you for standing in agreement and praying that with me today. We must thank fathers today, and I thank you for taking the time to listen to this message to just lift up our fathers. I also ask that if you do have a prayer request or a testimony, that you would share it at julieblair.com. And one final thing, please like and share this message so that we can raise up other fathers, we can give them hope, and we can all give the glory to God, our Father. God bless you in Jesus' name. Till next time.